That was the sound of a Ferrari, and today we're going to be talking about a Ferrari pen. This pen was sent to me by Lee. Thank you, Lee. Um, she did not use it that much, and uh, it's fascinating. Now, you may know that Schaefer has made, I think, a few Ferrari pens, but this does not seem to be by Schaefer, so um, we're not entirely sure who made this. It could have been Ferrari itself. I don't know. Um, what I do know is that I, I tried to find information online and I could not find it. Uh, I, I could not retrieve this pen, find it anywhere. But that doesn't matter. We're going to have a look at the pen, the parts of the pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and uh, then we'll do a writing sample. Let's start at the top of the cap. Usually that's a little bland. Well, with this pen, it's actually not because it has that Ferrari logo. Look at that. By the way, one thing I would very much like to point out right here, right now, is that I know absolutely nothing about cars. I'm not a car guy. So, uh, whatever. Um, just so you know. Then we have the clip. The clip, I think, is a pretty nice design. Uh, to the, uh, the whole pen is, is, is gaudy to, to a certain degree, but not necessarily in a bad way. It's kind of fun. You have the Ferrari logo. You have all these mechanical-looking rivets right right there and, 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 and little things, relief sticking out, um, you go further down the cap and you got those little studs, uh, and then you have a center band, which is actually um, part of the barrel, as you can see, and the barrel itself also has these round rivets, it has these, these big bars, which are actually relief, they all stick out, and then you have the end, or butt end of the, um, uh, the, the, the barrel. Very fascinating design, I think. It's uh, it's all metal, so it's, it has definitely has some, some heft to it. Uh, the cap just slips off, and then you get the section, which has a pretty interesting shape. Again, a sort of industrial-looking design with that, that step-down. By the way, the step-down, yes, there is a bit of a step-down. It doesn't really bother me. The section is quite long. Uh, it is made of a smooth material. Uh, I think it's metal, too. Yeah, it really feels like metal. Um, and then we have the nib, and the nib is nothing that spectacular, it's Iridium Point Germany, you've seen these before, uh, it could be a Jovo nib, it has that sort of, that scroll work that, that uh, Jovo often has, feed nothing spectacular. One thing that's nice about this pen, I haven't inked it up yet, did not come with a converter, so I've just, uh, I've just slipped in one of those Chinese converters, um, which, which I have, and they, they, you can get them on eBay. I think five dollars for ten or something, and they, they fit in a lot of pens. Um, so, so check check eBay. Now I'm going to get requests for links. I don't really have a link, and it is a, it has it is a weird name. They said something like pen accessory, whatever. It, I'm I'm sorry. I can look into it if you really want to know, but uh, it's a good good source. Interesting thing about the section is it's fairly easy to disassemble, um, and that's one of the things I did not like so much about the pen. Um, to to jump ahead just a bit. Uh, you see that by by rotating the converter, you can actually make the nib rotate a bit, um, which is not a huge issue as long as you don't rotate the converter. So it's uh, it's not a small pen. This one, it's not huge, but because of all the metal, it has some some weight. Um, you can post it, then it gets really big and super top heavy. Look how far the cap sticks out. It's all metal, so this is really weighed down uh, significantly, and also. Um, you know, I think that's part of the pen. I think we can move on to things I like about it and don't like about it. Um, what I like about it, I, I mean, I like the looks. It's a flashy pen, it's a bit gaudy, but it's fun. It's a fun pen to have, it's fun to use, it's it's fun to carry around. And it will definitely attract attention because of the bright color, because of these, these round rivets, because of the these little bars there. It, it all looks pretty fancy. I like that. It was a bit dry. I worked on the nib just a little bit, so what you're going to see in the writing sample is not the pen as it wrote out of the box, uh, but but as it writes now. Um, it's 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 pretty easy to use. It's it's fun to use. Um, I I like it. You know, converter cartridges easy to use pen. One thing I don't really like is that if you post it. I mean, first of all, the posting is a little bit ridiculous. I like a bigger pen, but this this I mean this is ridiculous, uh, and it's also very top-heavy, and one thing I don't really like is that you have that gap there, uh, which, which is just a, an aesthetic issue, but there's a gap between the, the pen and the barrel when you post it, you can push it down, um, and then the gap is gone, which I like a bit better, but I, I'm not really keen on doing that, because this is a pen with one of those white plastic inner caps, 
This one looks pretty strong, um, and it's you can actually you've got a bit of space there, but I, I would be a little careful if you do something like that. That's pretty much all I can say. It's it's a fun pen, and um, you know, so let's do it. Now I'm grabbing my scale here because I want to take some measurements. Uh, with me, the pen weight comes down to 50 grams, heavy for a pen. Let's take the calipers. There we go, 142 millimeters, capped, uncapped. Oops, it's a fairly slippery pan. Uncapped, I get to 119 millimeters, section diameter at the narrowest point, where you can still grip it, is a good 8 millimeters, and all the way down near the barrel, it's a good 9 millimeters. Good nine, almost ten. That's all there's to it. So I think what we need to do next is a writing sample. Guess which color of ink I'm going to put in here. Uh, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go, writing with the Ferrari pen. The nib, I would say, is medium, and the ink is Ackermann. Why did I say that with a French accent? Ackermann, Chinatown, red. The paper is Rhodia, and the quick brown fox. Jumps over the red Ferrari. Now, if you do a bit of fast writing, you don't see any skipping or skidding or whatever. Uh, I have worked on the nib. The nib was a bit drier before that, and I think it would have skipped then, but it doesn't do so now because I have worked on it, so now it works and it's fine and it's all great. Let's go on. Um, wetness. Well, yes, now it's wet. Earlier it wasn't. <clears throat> the Steve Meister does it again! That's what happens when it's something nice and wet. Okay, what about line variation? Well, it is a steel nib. You can squeeze out a bit, but... It's not made to flex or anything, and it's, it's fairly stiff steel. But as you can see, you can you can just squeeze out a bit if you really want to. Um, one thing we'd have to try is some reverse writing. I'm really applying some pressure here, so as you can see, it's very dry. It would be a very fine line, but it's it's very very dry. So I think that's all I can say about this pen. Fascinating little pen. Pleasant to use bit heavy, bit gaudy, but that's kind of part of the fun. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.